Hello chimpanzee volunteers. Welcome to How to Recognize Chimpanzee Faces. In this tutorial, we'll learn a step-by-step -step technique that you can use to begin recognizing and matching individual chimps that you come across while working on chimpanzee. This technique is similar to how facial recognition technology works or how an artist might analyze a face before drawing it. You'll learn how to see the structure of a face, the size and placement of the features, and other traits that make up the unique faces of each individual chimpanzee. First, we'll go over how to use the technique in the more familiar human face. Then, we'll see how to apply it to chimps. Let's get started. Here we see two human faces. Now, as soon as you saw these photos, your brain recognized that they are two different women, right? You probably didn't even have to think about it, you just knew. But, if you wanted to think about it, to really be sure, you'd probably start by looking at different parts of the face, right? Maybe the eye color, the shape of the nose, the hair and skin color, the shape of the mouth, and so forth. Well, that's what we're going to do. Just be a little bit more scientific about it. Beginning with the first woman, let's use this checklist to examine all of her features systematically. It's important to note that we want to focus on features that won't change much if we were to see her on another day, from another angle, or in different lighting. So ignore things like clothes and note colors, but don't rely on them to be consistent. As we go through the list, I'll be marking lines on the face to demonstrate the features that you should be looking at. First, we want to look at the general shape and proportion of the head. How tall is the head, going from the hairline to the chin down the center of the face. Then, how wide is the face at the widest part, which is usually what we refer to as the cheekbone. You may have also noticed that the shape of this woman's face is rather angular and sharp. Her jawbone comes down at a sharp angle and her cheekbones are very prominent. Now, with the overall structure identified, we can more easily see the placement and proportion of the other features. Now, if this is starting to feel too technical for you, don't worry. I'm really just explaining what your brain probably already does naturally, and for our purposes, there's no need to be exact. Okay, on to the hairline. We can't see her exact hairline here, but there is a part to the left of center that curves slightly like this. Her eyebrows are long and flat, with a sharp angle off to the side beyond the outer edge of the eyes. Her eyes are an average size and shape, the distance between the eyes looks about average also, at least in proportion to the rest of her face. Her ears aren't really visible, just one little part of the lobe here, which is attached and in line with the cheekbone. The nose is rather thin, with small nostrils that are just barely visible. The shape of her mouth is what jumped out at me when I first saw this photo. Like the rest of her face, it's quite angular. Her top lip almost looks like a spread out capital M. The medial cleft, which is that little indentation above the center of the mouth, is very narrow and deep, which is rather unique. Beyond that, are there any other distinguishing marks? Well, she has freckles on much of her face, uh, but there is one mole on her jawline here that really stands out. It's something not common to most people, and most likely won't change over time, so it's a good feature to make a note of. Okay, now we have this woman who we think is different, but let's run through the list to be sure. This woman's head is very round, not much taller than it is wide, uh, though we have to guess a little bit because of the hair being in the way. The jawline is also round and wide. Her hair is parted deeply just to the left of the center of her forehead, and her eyebrows have a, a subtle arc to them, ending just a little past the outer corner of the eye. Her eyes are about average, maybe a little on the small side, and spaced fairly wide apart. The nose is small and thin, and upturned just a bit. We can see these narrow nostril openings here. The mouth is medium size, with the bottom lip fuller than the top. The medial cleft is pretty wide. Uh, it gives a, a soft, subtle bow shape to the lips. And on either side, we have a noticeable curved line that we sometimes refer to as laugh lines. Now you notice I skipped the ears. Um, unfortunately, this woman's ears are obscured by her hair, uh, and the rest of her skin is, is obscured by makeup. However, I think we have enough strong facial characteristics that we can compare her. You'll run into similar situations when you're comparing chimpanzees. Sometimes you just can't see something. Sometimes it's not there. 
Um, you do the best that you can with what you've got, and sometimes the absence of something is a characteristic of its own. Okay, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the features that we see on these two women. We're looking to see which traits they have in common and where they differ. If there are any areas where we don't have two features to compare, or we don't feel like we have a good enough view, we can just skip them and focus on what we can compare confidently. Here you see that I've made the lines green where I thought they were a match and red where I thought they looked different. Areas where I was unsure, in this case the ears, I left blue. Remember this is just for demonstration purposes to draw your attention to the features we're comparing. You won't be drawing lines like this on chimpanzee. So here, the only thing I can find that these two women have in common is that they both have a thin nose. I wasn't sure about the ear, but everything else looked different. A narrow angular face versus a wide round face, hair parted at different angles, very different shaped lips, and so forth. It's pretty interesting, isn't it, just how different these women's faces are when you break them down piece by piece. On the other hand, if they were in fact the same person, no matter how much they tried to distort their appearance to make themselves look different, there are many features that just can't be changed. And this is what will allow us to recognize individual chimpanzees as well. Now, let's apply what we've learned to chimps instead of humans. Here we have a handsome adult male chimp as seen on chimpanzee. Let's describe his features. Going down the same checklist we used before. We see the head is rather broad and flatter on top. The muzzle is fairly boxy. You can see as it comes down from the nose, it angles out sharply and then squares off toward the chin. There's a small rounded bald spot in the center of the forehead and the rest of the hair is fluffy but otherwise unremarkable. The brow line is light in color and very rounded. Um, the eyes are small, round, and somewhat close together. Uh, we only see the left ear, um, but it looks very small and has a bit of a forward curve to it. That's important to remember because ears can be very distinctive in chimps due to their natural shape, or size, or placement on the head, or from injuries. The nose is quite small, and the mouth is shiny black with a, a bit of a pucker or pout to the lips, at least at the moment. I don't see any scars or other markings, but this chimp does have bright white hair on his chin, and it looks like some light gray hair on the back as well. Remember, gray hair doesn't always indicate the age as it would in humans, but it can be a unique trait nonetheless. Now here's another chimp. It looks somewhat similar and about the same size as our first chimp. Is it the same one? Let's take a look. So the angle of the head is tricky here since he's looking over his shoulder, but we can still pick out a lot of details. We'll sort of have to guess at the overall shape of the head, but we can see the shape of the face here and this rather squared muzzle. The hair is smooth on the top of the head, and no balding that I can see. The brow has two nice round arches, though the left brow looks like there's a scar in the center. The eyes are round and somewhat close together, uh, and we only see the left ear, but it is large and round, um, dark in color, uh, with no visible damage. It's set rather far back on the head, too. The nose is very small, uh, not much to see there. The mouth is dark and shiny with sort of pouty protruding lips. This chimp also has a deep line, possibly a scar on his cheek, which is pretty unique. Under the mouth, we see a bright white beard that goes across the entire chin. Uh, otherwise, I don't see any markings or coloration changes, at least from this angle. The light circular patch that you see on the hip is just a reflection of sunlight. Um, otherwise, the hair is pretty much solid black. Uh, so there are no other markings or coloration changes that we need to note for this chimp. Now that we've gotten a good look at both chimps, let's compare them. Like before, just looking at what I feel comfortable in comparing between the two, I think there are enough differences to rule out this match. The heads are a different shape, even considering the angle of chimp B. Uh, they do both have white hair on the chin, but as you can see, chimp B's back is completely dark, unlike chimp A. Chimp A also has that round, bald spot and the very small left ear, while Chimp B has the large ear, 
a scar in the brow, and a line on his cheek. So we can, pretty much without a doubt, say that these are two different chimps and not a match. Next, let's take a look at this chimp, the one on the right here holding onto the tree. Hopefully by now you're able to tell right away that our new chimp, Chimp C, is not the same as the other two we've seen. In fact, let's do this one with just the checklist, no lines, and see if we can describe this chimp. The first thing I notice is that this chimp is smaller and younger than the others we've seen. The head is oval shaped, taller than it is wide, and the muzzle is very round. The face overall is a light pinkish brown color. Uh, the hair is dark. On top of the head, the hair is short and smooth looking, and there's just a notch of a bald spot just to the right of the center. The brows are very prominent, light, and mostly straight across with maybe just the tiniest dip in the center. The eyes are small, dark, round, and they appear to be deep set, especially under that prominent brow. The ears are large and round on this chimp with the same pinkish brown color as the skin on the face. Its nose looks upturned. Uh, the nostrils are clearly visible on this chimp. The mouth is open, but otherwise normal. And on the chin, there is a small amount of white hair visible. Now, as you see, we've written down notes about this chimp's appearance to help us identify it and compare it with other chimps. While you're working on Chimp and C, you can post this type of description on the discussion boards so other volunteers can help you find a match or to explain your proposal for a match if you think you found one. Speaking of matching, since we're sure that Chimp C doesn't match either Chimp A or Chimp B, what about Chimp D? Now that we have our notes about Chimp C, Confirming or ruling out a match with Chimp D will be easy. When comparing one chimp directly to another, you can use the list of traits as your starting point. For example, does Chimp D have an oval head? Yep. A round muzzle? Yep. And so on. If there are mostly matching traits, and nothing that rules out a match, chances are pretty good that it's the same chimp. You should then go over the full checklist to make sure you don't miss something, uh, like a scar or other trait that only Chimp D has. Okay, one more, just for fun. You'll do this one all on your own. Here are three chimps that look very similar. Two of them are, in fact, the same chimp. One of them is different. Study them closely and see if you can pick out the chimp that doesn't belong in this match. Pause the video and take all the time you need. If you need help, press play again to get a hint of some specific features to look for. After the hint, I'll give you the answer. Good luck! The features highlighted in the checklist are the keys to telling the difference between these chimps. Ready for the answer? If you saw the hint, you know the key features for telling these chimps apart are the ears and noses. On chimp E, the left ear has a strong crease or fold going horizontally near the top. Chimp F has a slight crease, but it's not nearly as prominent. Chimp G has the same strong horizontal crease as Chimp E. Also, the noses. All three chimps have dark masks around their eyes, but in Chimp F, the dark mask stops higher, leaving the nose light, similar to the surrounding skin below. Chimp E and G both have dark noses where the mask extends lower. Tiny details, but that's all it takes to identify these as images of two different chimps rather than three of the same. And that's chimp matching. Not too hard, right? Maybe even a little fun? Even if you had trouble, don't worry. There will be other volunteers and moderators on Chimp and C to help you out, and the more you do it, the better you'll get. So, good luck in your chimp matching efforts, and we'll see you back at Chimp and C.